So now that we've gone through all of our introductions, it's time to start working with Scratch and learning how to actually program. We're going to learn to program with Scratch by controlling that cat and moving him around on the screen. I'd suggest that you go ahead and bring Scratch up if you don't have it up already. Uh, go ahead and bring up Scratch in your browser and get to this point where you just have the cat on an empty screen. And then as you're watching the videos, you can pause the videos or kind of put them in the background and sort of follow along uh, at the same time on your version of Scratch. Okay, so let's get started. We want to be able to control this cat and have him move around. You'll remember that, what, that I described to you that you are the director of a play or a movie, and so we've got our actor here on our stage, and this list here in the middle is everything we can ask the cat to do. And the first thing I want to get started with is just moving the cat. And so, in fact, I'm going to take this very first block at the very top, this move 10 steps, and if I left-click on that block and start to drag my mouse over, I've grabbed a little copy of that, and I can grab this, this block from the menu, and I can drop it over here in the program area. Remember I said that this area here on the right is where I control, is where I, I, I put together my commands for my cat. And so my first basic command is this move 10 steps. And you'll notice very carefully here, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do and then do it, that if I, if I double click on this block, move 10 steps, I'm actually saying right now to the cat, I want you to move 10 steps. And when I do it, this cat will, will move just a little bit. Okay, so watch the cat. And you'll notice there that he just moved just a few pixels to the right. In fact, when we talk about 10 steps here, what we're talking about, roughly speaking, is pixels. Uh, it may not be a direct one-to-one -one pixel relationship on, on your monitor, depending a little bit on what kind of a monitor you're using and the resolution. But basically, I'm saying asking the cat to move 10 steps. And every time I click on it, he moves a little more. right? And you'll notice that the 10 is in a circle. Um, and in fact, that it sort of gives the impression that maybe that's something that can be changed. And that's exactly the right impression to get, because it can. I can click. My, my mouse cursor in that, that area, in that hole where it says 10 steps, and it highlights, and I can say uh, move 50 steps maybe, right? I want to move 50 steps when I, when I click on this. And now he jumps much further. And, and suppose I don't want him to move, continue to move to the right, I want him to move backwards. Well, here's why we say maybe you need eight or nine-year-olds to do a little bit with Scratch. They have to have a little bit of a concept of negative numbers. If I want to move back to the left, I can say move negative 50, and I can double-click on that and move the cat backwards along the stage. Okay, and so that's, I mean, the very basics here. The very simplest way to move the cat is this first block moving uh, straight forward and backwards by changing the parameter, the value, in that little circle. Positive numbers move to the right, negative numbers move to the left. Okay? And now we'll move down this command and look at the very next block, right? The next block that I could do is to turn clockwise some number of degrees. And by default, this says turn clockwise 15 degrees. And again, if I double click on this, you'll notice that my cat over there is, is rotating. 15 degrees at a time, and I'll, I can spin him all the way around, right? 15 degrees at a time. Or I can change this. I can say I don't want him to change 15. I want him to change 45 degrees at a time. Right? And we can move him around in a circle by clicking on those things. And so that's, you know, that's the, the basics of motion here. We move forward and backwards, and then we rotate. And so if I want to rotate, you know, 45 degrees, and then I move forward, let me change this back to a positive 50, right? I can say move forward 50 steps. And then I might want to turn 45 degrees and move another 50 steps. And then turn 45 degrees and move another 50 steps. And I can keep clicking on these, right? and giving commands. Or it might be that I want to keep doing one right after the other, and so I want to join these commands together. And I want to be able to say, do these two things. And so you'll notice that if I pick this block up, again, I'm left clicking on the, the block. And as I get closer to this command, you'll notice that bright white line appears there. And whenever that bright white line appears, that's the signal from scratch that if I drop the block right now, that these two blocks will join together. And so I can either turn after my motion or before my motion, doesn't matter, right? You can just see where it's going to go depending on where it is. If I get too far away, it's just going to drop separate. But if I drop it close, they join together. And so now when I click on this, what I'm saying to the computer is first move 50 steps and then turn 
45 degrees. Right? And so now I can just quickly move them around by, by doing multiples of that. It's important to note right away from the very beginning that this is a sequential set of actions. When I say move 50 steps, he does first move those 50 steps, and then only after that's done does he stop and turn 45 degrees. This, this isn't done you know, simultaneously. It's done one right after the other. And that, that concept becomes more important as we move on. In this lesson, we looked at two of the basic blocks for movement in Scratch, the move block and the turn block. And we've basically been interacting with Scratch one or two commands at a time. In the next lesson, what we want to look at is how we formally put those blocks together on, into the concept of a program.